the 2018 Husqvarna TE250. One of the things that I noticed right off the bat that was difficult for me to get used to because I grew up on motocross bikes having 19 inch rear wheels was the 18 inch rear wheel of this bike. It's made for enduro and it's very quick to handle, quick to change direction, but it also tends to drop down pretty low into the whoops instead of staying on top. And I had to change my body positioning over jumps and stuff like that um, because it just shoots you a little bit different. But after getting used to it, it's no big deal at all. It's awesome. The Magura hydraulic clutch and brake is also an awesome feature of this bike. The clutch is definitely uh, an easy feel. It's, it never changes feel. It's exactly the same feel all day long and it's very consistent. It's maintenance free. It's very tough. And same with the brake. The brake is a little bit different for me to get used to. I found myself locking up the front wheel when I first started using it just because it takes a little bit of getting used to it. Um, doesn't require more pressure to lock up the brake, it just requires a different position. So the more you squeeze in, the more it's gonna activate that brake, but you don't need to squeeze any harder. The Explorer forks are amazing. They have a really good feel to them. Um, I found that they were a little bit soft from the showroom floor, so I just adjusted them a little bit and I got them pretty much dialed in within the second ride. So they're fairly easy to adjust. Um, and they have those adjustable knobs right up on top and you can do that by finger instead of by screwdriver. And that is one of the differences between the Husqvarna and KTM. So the KTM you'll have to use a screwdriver, the Husqvarna you can just do by hand. And that is very convenient, something that I really enjoy having because I can adapt to each situation and, and just change it on the fly. And uh, the adjustability is amazing. You can go from rock hard to just pillow soft. Very adjustable. The linkage suspension was one of the main reasons I bought the Husqvarna TE250. Husqvarna's come with linkage and that's a big plus for me. I really like linkage suspension. It makes a big difference when you're hitting uh, things at high speed. If you're taking big impacts, it really makes a difference. So bikes I've had in the past with linkage have just performed a lot better. And this bike is no exception. It, it really performs well. Uh, not that I've used a real modern linkage list bike, but I just trust the linkage suspension a lot more. So that's what I've gone with. The thing I would recommend that you do before you even ride the bike is put a pipe guard on it. Um, I smashed my pipe within two rides and I had one on order. So uh, I had to have my pipe repaired and then I put my guard on it, but uh, the pipe hangs down really low. It's nickel plated, which is really nice, but uh, it won't be nice for long if you don't protect it. So that's the one thing I would get for my bike. If I was to do it again, I would have a pipe guard on there before my first ride. Husqvarna also comes with Pro Taper handlebars, which I really prefer. Uh, Pro Tapers have always been my favorite since I've started using them. I really like the bend on these. They're a neutral bend, very nice. Uh, the KTM comes with a different set of bars. I'm not sure, I can't remember the brand, but Pro Taper has always been my preference. The brake pedal is really small. I've noticed that when I go to reach for it, sometimes I'll miss it and I've learned to really squeeze in. And if you're using proper body positioning, this shouldn't be a problem for you, but I've noticed that I miss that thing um, pretty often still and because you know proper body positioning isn't always easy to, to come by when you're bouncing around in the rocks or in an enduro situations where things get a little bit extreme and you're just bouncing all over the place so I'll probably replace the uh, the pad for that brake rear brake lever just so it's easier to connect with this year model the composite subframe is finally covered up. I used to have a 2015 Husqvarna and the composite subframe was exposed and so your boot would rub through your subframe eventually with hours and hours of riding. So this bike will not do that. They've redesigned the plastic to cover it up so no issue there. Um, so as far as the subframe, it's composite but I don't know that um, there are any real pluses or minuses compared to the KTM there. The Husqvarna TE250 makes 53 horsepower. Um, when you rev it up, it really screams, but it doesn't like to stay up on top. 
By that I mean it doesn't have a wide power band up on top range. It has more of a forgiving linear power band. So it makes a ton of power and the power is very usable. I really enjoy it, but it's not the bike that I will just keep screaming all the time. It really likes to be ridden in the bottom and mid range and it's very forgiving down there and you can monitor your traction a lot better. With 53 horsepower, you really don't want to be running on top anyways. The motor just works amazingly. And along with that, the transmission on the TE is a wide ratio transmission. So first and second are pretty close and third is way out there. So this bike will do about 90 miles an hour on top. And yet in first gear, it will absolutely just crawl. It doesn't lack any kind of torque, no matter what your weight is. And I would argue that the suspension would be fine for just about any weight. Husqvarna actually sells the side panels with graphics already installed, which it makes it very convenient. They seem to be very, very durable, and they seem to be layered and melted on there. It's really nice to have that headlight on there, especially when things are getting dark. This is the first bike I've ever had that has had a headlight on the front. The stock AT81 tires are grippy. They're very nice tires, but plan on replacing those within about 12 hours of ride time. Uh, they completely chunked off and fell apart on me pretty quick. The fuel tank capacity is 2.6 gallons on this bike. I got stranded out in the woods um, when I first bought it, and that day ended up being 86 miles, and I just hit reserve when I got back to the truck. So this bike will easily do 90 miles on one tank if you're careful. On that day, I did coast down a lot of the hills and stuff like that because I knew I was in a little bit of trouble. So that said, uh, you should be able to do an 80 to 100 mile day pretty easily with the stock tank, which is very nice. It also has electric start, which is extremely reliable and has never failed me yet. It comes with backup kickstart, which was an absolute must for me when I was going to buy a bike. So this machine absolutely had everything that I was looking for in a bike. Uh, the kickstart, I can't say enough for having that. You really have to have that. And uh, the electric start is really nice, especially when you're stuck in an awkward position. Or the bike is up above you or beside you or you're stuck in some rocks in a weird spot and all you can do is push a button. It will also allow you just to be lazy some days and just push the button but it has saved me more often than not. And um, it works so well that I've leaned up against the starter and it has actually turned over the bike in gear and started the bike and the motor st so strong that the bike started up and started to roll forward. So I had to pull in the clutch and then kill it. That says a lot about the starter and that says a lot about this engine. This is absolutely a great bike though, no matter what kind of riding you're doing.